Hi, I'm On. And I'm Clint. And we're Talking Heads. Our job for the next few minutes will be to introduce you to and instruct you in the basics of the ancient board game called Go. You can call me Black. And you can call me White. We represent the pieces, also called stones, used in playing this fun game. The game of Go has been around for at least 4,000 years, and it's still going strong. In fact, it's one of the most popular games in all the world. That's true. You may not know this, but there are professional Go players in Asia who are treated with the same celebrity status as our major sports and pop stars are in America. Yes, but you don't have to be a super brain to learn and enjoy this super game. All you need are a few tips and a Go set, along with a desire to learn and to have fun. So sit back and absorb while we teach you the basics you need to know to play Go. And feel free to rewind and replay any section you need clarification on. Go is played on a square board with an equal number of horizontal and vertical lines that form intersections, like on the board you see here. Most Go games are played on a board that has 19 by 19 intersecting lines. But since the TV screen is only so big, and since we can only compete for your attention for so long, we'll be using a board that includes 9 by 9 intersections. You should feel free as a beginner to play on either a 9 by 9 or a 13 by 13 board. You play the game with black and white stones, like these. Each player gets the same number of stones. Touch them. You'll like the way they feel. One player plays the black stones while the other plays the white. Black always goes first. You play the game by placing stones on the intersection of two lines. This is different from chess and checkers where you place the game pieces inside the lines. Another thing that's different is that the stones don't move once they're placed on the board unless they are captured by your opponent. The object of the game is to command the most territory or area on the board with the stones you put down. The player with the most territory on the board wins. A good rule of thumb is space plus stones equals territory. Part of commanding territory includes capturing the other player's stones on the board, but we'll get to more on that later. The area that you command on the board equals points when the game is finished. Whoever has the most points or territory wins the game. Here, we'll show you how. When playing Go, your main goal is to surround territory on the board. In order to understand what territory is, you need to understand the relationship of the stones to the game board. Go is played by placing stones on intersecting lines. By placing stones next to each other, you create a formation that surrounds territory. Here's an example. Notice that black surrounds all the space in this corner, at least for now. Count them up. 10 empty points plus 8 stones equal 18 points of territory. Remember, space plus stones equals territory. When you begin a game, you'll want to start by thinking about what territory you want to gain. Your opponent may challenge this. Don't worry, this is half the fun. The corner areas of the board are great places to start the game. By placing stones in the corner areas, you begin to establish your territory in big chunks which hopefully you will fill in later. Be careful though, because your opponent can surround your stones and capture you. More on this in the next segment. The game of Go is believed to have originated around 2350 BC, over 4,000 years ago in China. One legend has it that it was invented by Emperor Yao as a mental exercise for a son of his who wasn't too bright. Others believe the game evolved from an early form of mathematical calculation. More on Go's history in a bit. Let's get back to the basics. An important way of gaining territory in Go includes capturing your opponent's stones. To do this, you surround their stone or stones with your own pieces. When a stone is placed on an intersection by itself, it will have a number of lines extending from it. These lines are called liberties. Think of liberties as free or empty spaces where either you or your opponent can place stones. Most stones start out on the board having four liberties. To capture your opponent's stone, place your stones on each of their liberties. When the last liberty is covered, the stone is considered captured and is removed from the board where you keep it until the end of the game. This brings us to the subject of... Atari. You may know it as an ancient computer and video game company, but it's actually a Japanese term used in Go that means capture on the next move. So if your stone's liberties are taken on all but one side, your opponent can capture you on their next move. 
by placing their stone on your last liberty. This situation is called Atari. And it's considered polite to tell your opponent when you've put them in Atari, but it's not necessary. And notice that if your stone is along the side of the board, then you can be placed in Atari in two moves. And if your stone is on the corner of the board, in only one. Just so you understand, the term Atari is not as important as knowing you're in a situation where you're about to be captured. And of course, since each of you are taking turns placing stones on the board, capturing your opponent's stones may not be as easy as it looks. That's right. While you're trying to capture them, they're probably looking at capturing you too. That's why it's usually better not to focus only on capturing stones, but more on surrounding territory. After you play a little bit, you'll see what we mean. But first, let's tell you a little more about the history of the game. Yet another theory on the origin of the game is that Go derived from ancient Chinese mystics and shamans who placed black and white stones on a square board marked with astrological symbols to help them predict the future. No one knows for sure how Go really began, but its popularity grew from a game played mostly by emperors into a game enjoyed by millions throughout Asia.